Dear God, we come in name for you, that our prayer is the same. Quiet our minds, so that we can hear you. Steal our hearts, so that we can remember to love. The living way is the path we all seek. Strengthen our lives, so that we can serve you. Inspire our spirits, so we can do the work for you. On this special day, remind us that our path is endless. It's like a stream of water flowing, moving, healing. Your love is endless. Dear God, we have many names, but for our prayer is the same. Offer our blessings. Amen.
that I use daily on this Christmas channel, and it is, you've got to put in your time. If physics is driving down your grade like gravity and Jupiter, you've got to put in your time. If advanced biology makes you want to commit apoptosis, you've got to put in your time. <laughs> if you don't know where to start when searching for colleges, if you have no idea what you want to do with yourself, just say, I've got to put in my time. Now, as I do all the time, let's talk about life. Not the board game, and certainly more than the heartbeat. Life means experiencing all parts of humanity, which is a double-edged sword, and great with joys, tragedies, gains, and losses. You will have much to be grateful for, and happiness to remember, uh, which is tough to do, but it's hard necessary, especially when pain moves into you, and your range of body is divine will. In December, our friend and internal mentor, Sam Murphy, we left us. May you rest in peace. We were crippled with loss, anger, pain, along with all the hurt. I was also confused. I didn't take any of his classes, didn't talk to him much. I remember our average conversation began and ended with hello. Yet I still wanted to honor the man I had yet to know. Time slowed down and I looked. We were all left with each other, dealing with the absence. I took it upon myself to find the answers and trekked up three flights of stairs to talk to this wise old sage. A man with a clean shaven face, with bright pants, and for some reason, he keeps brains in this reason. He says they're for decorating and the family comes home for Christmas. I thought he was a biology teacher, but I guess he learned something new every day. I said something along the lines of, What do I do? How do I understand? How am I supposed to feel? How do I honestly know his life? I'm very confused. The stage showed me with words and recognition of being a familiar place that it was our job to celebrate someone else's life. I didn't know what he meant, but as days turned to weeks, and that's how I, and I saw how people remembered to me when I understood. The memories of his idiosyncratic teaching, happiness, his music, and sense of humor. That's what we held on to. That's what we really lived. The observation of celebrating life and a sublime life stuck, and I carried into the days that met me. As time went by, I felt the pain of all of you. But I also felt the memories of humor and divine times resting in his classroom. I felt everyone honor his life. Juniors, as you grow up and roll the punches, whether you're losing someone or not charging a calculator for a quiz, which is rejection from college, a bad fight with your parents. When life's face of joy turns away and you run into spikes over the things. Remember to celebrate the lives we live. Remember moments with your best friends, with people who love and stick what's stuck with you. Whether it was the music they played, one certain look they gave you, your head was angled just right. Right in the middle of being yelled for the first time. How short they looked at that feels on. When you heard your tears on the phone for the first time, you wanted to tell you were absolutely beautiful. When you went and protested Trump, when you went and made a music video. When they gave you a box of nothing for your birthday. When they got you an RGB2 egg holder cuff thing, which somehow broke in the kitchen floor. Sorry about that. Um, and how they laughed at a really gross joke. To the day you all lay on the dock with the sun drying by and you could swear you sweat out that day. Remember those moments and celebrate your joy. It is your right and duty to do so. Juniors, you all are going to go through the hurdles of the days in front of you have no doubt. While you're moving on, remember to put in your time and celebrate your lives. Juniors, you are one of the best parts of this school. I say that with pride and with carefully crafted joy towards the conversations we've had. The days of seeing you dance, run around, and celebrate your youth with a burning desire to live. I wouldn't wish for the school to be left in anyone else's hands. You are perfect, perfect, absolutely perfect. Dearly beloved, you have gathered here today to get through this thing we call adolescence. Your sweet word, adolescence, it means forever young. But I'm here to tell you, you're something else. The rest of your life. A world of true blue self discovery, cold hardship, warm memory, eternal, calm, and beauty. A time of fulfillment and movement. So when you submit your application for your top college, you know the one, the 7% acceptance rate. Instead of asking for a job in an office, ask yourself for a shot at life. This life, it's just a taste. This life, it's just the beginning. And if the elevator tries to bring you down, go crazy. Put your higher floor. Live long and prosper. Thank you. <laughs>
Good morning. So when the junior class asked me to speak today, I immediately said yes, and then I said, wait, what? I did not realize it was going to be the oddest episode of The Bachelor ever. It was something new to me. In my school, uh, we didn't have a ring ceremony. You showed up to the jeweler, got a ring, and went home, and never talked about it again, apparently. So this is really neat for me to see, and so it's my first one, so thank you for bringing me into it. But as I was thinking about it, I think I needed to know what a ring ceremony was, so as any good story does, I started doing research. So first I asked who had given faculty speeches in the past. Mr. Russell, Dr. Wells. Exactly, and then I was told, oh, Dr. Wells gave a speech last year. He was really good. He was really good. <laughs> so, you know, no pressure for me. And so I felt a bit like, uh, you know, whoever came on after the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show. Uh, okay, so, sorry, wrong crowd for that one. How about, um, whatever show comes on Sunday after Game of Thrones, that's what I'm doing apparently. Personally, I, I think it's just the is looking to get back at me because they had any research papers yesterday and said, uh -huh. So anyway, here we go. So in my research, I asked a couple questions. What is a ring ceremony? Why do we do it? When did it start? And in a school that's about 40 years old, 163 years old, got a lot of answers, I just got a lot of questions too. So what I can figure out is our ceremony dates back before the merger of Kenwood Academy and St. Agnes. It's actually a tradition that the Sacred Heart schools have done in the past and still do, and something that we maintain. And so I look at what other schools do, and we have a lot of similarities. A lot of differences apparently too. Uh, in most schools, there are speeches by faculty and students. There's always the rings, but who gives them changes slightly from school to school. And for every ceremony, there's a lot of symbolism. At nearly every school, the ring is presented by a senior to a junior, and I don't know what the purpose of that was. It's the symbolism. So let's start with the rings. Well, let's start with the rings. Rings are full of symbolism that span the length of recorded history even, even earlier. As uh, Mrs. Clark said, it's a circle, an endless circle with no beginning, no end, but it's also a tangible image of permanence and the infinite. Rings are symbols of power. As I researched our ceremony, I had to admit I kept thinking of Mrs. Barbary's earlier chapel, I too am a product of fantasy and science fiction literature. And in that, rings are not only symbols, but also are artifacts of power, most famously in Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. In this trilogy, there are all sorts of rings, some powerful, some not, and I quote Tolkien, so it is May the 4th, after all, so May the 4th be with you. But Tolkien, three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. Seven for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone. Nine for mortal men doomed to die. One for the dark lord on his dark throne. In the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. One ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all and in the darkness find them. In the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Okay, yes, I did bring up I too am geek. And honestly, was there any question about that? But the point is that from history to literature, Rings are important symbols. Tolkien talks of rings to bind others. It isn't been the case in human history as well. Ancient Egyptians were known to use rings in wedding ceremonies. Romans used rings to claim ownership of others. Even symbols can have actual power. Thankfully today, we mainly use them to show us about the binding of a couple of marriage or simply as decoration. So what are these rings that you have received, juniors? They are powerful as well. For alumni wearing the ring tells the world of their pride in our school, the education that they worked so hard to achieve, and the proud path that they now follow. On Monday, we went to the mock trial team to see them receive their county championship trophies. Congratulations, guys. Good job. Several of those uh, members actually had a gay ring to receive rings. And at the end of the proceedings, the presiding judge, acting justice of the Supreme Court of New York, Deborah Young, came over to congratulate our team and introduce herself as Del Stewart alone in 1986. And that is a large part of the Don uh, sorry, that's a large part of what your ring is. It's a symbol that is really a part of the Don Stewart School community. A powerful symbol backed by little generations who also take pride in the to walk the halls of our institution. 
for our seniors, it's a promise that they too will soon be able to show their rings to others and tell how they are proud to have been a steward. For our juniors, it is a symbol of your new place in our school community. Soon you'll be the leaders of the student body, carrying on a century and a half of legacy. A promise that in the not too distant future, you will introduce yourself as Don Stewart, class of 2017. Power indeed. So, who are these future leaders of our school the nation? 40 earnest students who've already begun to buy their next step to college. Excellent students, they lead in and out of the classroom. We have members of many clubs, from Social Awareness Club to the Board Game Club to the Tea Club. Our juniors started with sure to be a new tradition in the St. Patrick's Day dance with the soccer, volleyball, basketball, baseball, softball, on track, do crew. I'm sure there's something there I never got from the idea to apologize. They care deeply, they stuff backpacks, they're sad, but only with Coach Light. They make me think, never have I talked where I've asked so many great, thoughtful questions. They make me laugh, especially when they just fly for a spider. They are so politically aware, shocked by Trump, still believing in Bernie, and they work. They work hard for me, for all of our teachers, and for each other. And yes, we do know this. Finally, the other symbol, the ceremony, those seniors I spoke of, those seniors that gave the ring, I tried to talk to a few of them before the ceremony and said, I think that's a sign. And I was assured that then deciding which senior gives the right to which junior is a very, very recent time consuming process. So why do our seniors give the rings? As I said, in other, other places, other people give the rings. Sometimes teachers, sometimes family members. For us, it is a passing of the torch. The announcement that our seniors are nearly done. Nearly done. <laughs> Not done yet. <laughs> they roasted their last corn, are soon to go to their last prom. They've done conge and retreat, sports and clubs. After today, a few more classes, a handful of exams, a walk across the stage behind me. They take the place of the You need to turn around. <laughs> you need to turn. All right, so today, with a twist in our ring, the seniors have given to you juniors the keys of the kingdom, the reins of leadership, to lead the student body and the school forward. So I'm very proud to be present to speak today. I want to thank the juniors again for having me. My best grand ceremony ever. So thank you very much. Congratulations. Situation. 
And for that, I thank you, faculty of John Stewart, because without you, this school would not be the same, and the junior class would not be where we are today. Seniors, you've completed a lot of yourselves. Not only have you gotten through junior year successfully, as we, we've almost done that, but you have almost finished your high school career, you've gone to college. Um, you've completed your applications, and you survived the waiting that comes with them. All while finishing out high school. And you guys have been friends and examples. So I extend my thanks from the junior class to you guys as well for passing down your torch to us. And then the juniors. Oh, juniors. Um, collectively, we've done a lot of amazing stuff together, and then also a lot of dumb stuff. We've broken the school track records. We've sent kids to state and national championships. We've almost survived in Vance Bio. We put on an entire dance. We helped the kids over at school too in Troy. We've been student ambassadors, musicians, and we've even harbored our own private connection to the United Nations. But then, we've also formed the band the Dwayne Stewart Experience. We've smashed a lot of oranges. Broken, lost, and otherwise dispensed with a lot of frisbees. Thought about walking to Russia. And really stressed over Junior Chapel. Uh, so, I don't know how many of you guys remember, but I haven't been here that long. Um, when I got here, almost two years ago now, uh, I really had no idea what to expect. And I was pretty nervous. Um, that was crazy. But I really, really thank you, class of 2017, for welcoming me and being my class. Uh, for all the good and the bad, I'd say we've done pretty darn well. So congratulations to us all for doing this, and I thank you so very much. Juniors and seniors, you are invited to the parlors afterwards for afternoon ceremony. Please stand. Dear Lord, may you guide our seniors during the, during the transition from the Dome Floor community to the Blue Mountain Model. May you help to inspire them to continue the joy of discovery and to nurture the value of a caring community. May our students go forth and meet new challenges to free nation and a compassionate heart. To our juniors, moving up to be leaders of our school, may you be blessed with the skills to lead this new body, and may you be willing to listen to our community needs. May the Lord bless you with a wonderful year ahead and be filled with excitement and fond memories. God bless you all. Amen.